think. All right, okay. All right. Yeah, we do. The Skull's got a new record coming out. Do you want to bring us up to speed on, on all that? Uh, well, right now it's that master. I just got the new... I just got it yesterday to listen to it again. <laughs> um, so it, it, it'll, it should be out like end of August, beginning of September, right for the uh, European tour. TP, right? So on TP? On TP, yeah. Okay. Um, so we got a couple of tours coming here in April and June. Like it's not going to be out yet, but we might play a couple of tunes from it. So we'll see what we'll see what happens. Well, you guys have got a lot of festivals lined up too. You're doing the the New England, Stoner, they're, they're, Doom. They're, they're all Doom Fest now after yours. <laughs> this was like Days of the Doom, but it's not. It's Doom Fest. <laughs> See, that's how we always call it. Now, I know. now they're all Doom Fest. You play, know. Are you playing Doom yeah, Fest? Yeah, there's, there's New England one. I think that's in Connecticut. Yeah. And uh, here in Chicago, there's one in June the second. Yeah, Doomed and Stone in Chicago down at Reggie's. But then so, you guys are doing the Malta Doom Fest. Oh when man, you guys that's gonna be awesome. That's like the last show of the tour. Yeah, it's gonna be. Nuts. So we're gonna put put my feet up on the Mediterranean like. And, and, <laughs> Wherever the hell that place is, you know. <laughs> and also doing one in Norway, but when it's the first, it's how the European tour kicks off in Norway. So we're playing two nights actually. One night we're the Skull, and the other night we're Trouble. Nice. So it's kind of interesting. Like I so think two, we two completely separate sets and two different eras. Yeah, you know, we did that at Roadburn a couple of years ago right. too. It's kind of freaky because you know you got to change. Mindsets like a little <laughs> bit, you know. And Walter, he wanted us to do the first album. We said no, and then we went out and did it. Did anyway. it anyway? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's cool. We'll see. I don't, we're not going to do that this time, but yeah. A uh, little bit of everything, I guess. So you're gonna have people are gonna have a chance to see you guys all over. You're gonna be pretty visible in the states, yeah. very visible in Europe. Well, yeah. You know, we went out and did that self title for a couple of weeks, and um, but I don't think we're gonna do this on these two tours. We're gonna do. Uh, some of it, mm -hmm. you know, but not like the whole thing again. And uh, looking forward to, I think the first one is going out east mm -hmm. again and down to Georgia, New Orleans, Texas, and stuff. So it'll be cool down, seeing those, down south. seeing our friends down that way again. We're gonna get to go out to the West Coast again in June, so it'll be cool. That'll be cool. That's always a good time out there. It's it's hard to get out there on a frequent basis or a consistent basis. Well, it's far. Yeah, there's a lot of geography once and you get yeah, close there's to the no in between shows like out east. Right, right, right. So it's like after Denver, as long as you take enough weed with you, like it's a long drive, you know, to, <laughs> you to try Seattle to, sleep. to get more. Try to, <laughs> <laughs> you try to sleep in between those I sleep spots. no matter what. As soon as we get in the fucking van, I'm out. <laughs> now, just to clarify, too, because I know a few people are asking, Brian Dixon is definitely... Yes, he's, yes. He's playing. Brian will be here. Okay. All right, excellent, excellent. Good guy. We messed with him. He looks like Ringo. Now, he didn't look like him when he was younger, but he mm. does now. So so we, I always <laughs> joke with him, like, you know, them boys got around back then more than we think. Oh, yeah. So I don't know, you know. He must have, like, <laughs> pretended he was delivering mail that day. <laughs> <laughs> we've, oh, we've got one of the Metal Chaos people here, Demetrius. How you doing, man? Thanks for joining us, man. So the recording process, it seemed to go pretty quick because I was pretty impressed that you gave me the, you know, one of the could be mastered versions of the album so fast. So it seems like you guys it jumped in there and nailed fast, it. Fast, actually. I mean, as soon as uh, this one was kind of tough a little bit, I spent all last year working on the last Blackfinger album, and I jumped right into the skull. So these two albums are kind of. Uh, one almost mm -hmm. i mean in a way even though they're two different bands and everything but lyrically it's always the same because it's me but right so for me they're kind of like uh <clears throat> i don't know how to how do you say godfather part one and two there you go you know revolver and rubber soul there you go the other way around rubber soul and revolver <laughs> so it's like one big giant story here you know sure yeah big story or in a way because yep. they were so close together right so I, sometimes I don't... Is it really, hard to change channels between the two? Not My, for mindset. me it isn't, because I'm just the same guy writing lyrics, like, you know, so... But I mean, I, I know we've talked about this before, but sometimes you've got lyrics that you're like, okay, that's definitely a Black Finger lyric, so no, you sort of lock that no. up. Not so much anymore? Lyrics... Interchangeable for you? It's just me. Okay. So that part is not different. Like, mm -hmm. musically, yes, because the dude's 
in each band they they have their um how they write mm -hmm. you know and writing to me music or words are expression of who you are right so that's the difference between the two bands is is the music you know um but lyrically no it's me so th that's the same so sometimes when records like trouble we you know would be a few years in between albums and that's just how I feel at that particular moment in time. Right. So this one, I got off the road, went in and recorded the Blackfinger album. As soon as I was done, I started writing for the Skull record. Right. So it's kind of, these two are really close to each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Kind of so, a brother-sister relationship a little bit. Well, that's kind of weird, but yeah. Well, okay. You know. I could have used a better analogy. Maybe right. like good brothers, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Spe <laughs> Speaking of Blackfinger... Now, I know that we tr we try to get some shows out there, and unfortunately, we had a guitar player that, that needed to part ways. Um, where's Blackfinger fitting in with, with everything? In your mind, I mean, I mean where's I, that piece of the puzzle right now? I have no idea at the moment. I mean, like I said, I went from recording that record mm -hmm. to doing some things, and like having to write this record, well, lyrics for this record, The New Skull, and, and, and playing shows and stuff, so... Right. It's like, right now I'm busy with the Skull because we're just finishing that record. We got a couple tours coming. So I'm going to be free, you know, I don't know, you know, June, July, and August possibly. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens. Sure. You know, I would love to do some things. And, you know, obviously we have to look for another guitar player. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been so busy with the Skull record that I really haven't had time. For any of that, no, you know, no, rightfully so. so I, I actually didn't even get a time to appreciate that record because I had to just jump into this one right, right. away. And usually I have time to let it breathe a little bit. Yeah. So right it. now I'm, I'm I'm on hiatus for writing. I need to live life again to see where it's going next. You know. Hey, this is a good follow up because Luis Ramirez is asking Hideas Volume Two. Well, actually, there is one. But it's only online. It's a download. It's a, all the covers that we did. You know, mm -hmm. the ideas is like not necessarily anything in particular. Mm -hmm. um, it was it dubbed ideas because I would get up in the morning and have my coffee and smoke weed, and I'd have all these brilliant ideas. Like you know, <laughs> so it's kind of cool, like funny. <laughs> so that was the first one, the acoustic one, mm -hmm. um, and then the second one was all the covers. And right. ah, you know, we'll see. I got a. An idea for a third one, actually, that uh, maybe of all the songs, all these years, the ones that I wrote musically, right. too. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time I just wrote lyrics, but there are right. a few here and there that I wrote the music to, so I've been well, thinking about posting that. Because the first time that you, le well, I shouldn't say the first, but when you left Trouble, right when Blackfinger first started, you went into the studio, and I mean, you really cranked out a ton of material well, at that point. that, actually, in between leaving Trouble and... Blackfinger was actually a couple of years. Right, you know, okay. I mean, I, uh, I, you know, I went through two divorces at the same time back then between my ex-wife and, and Trouble. Mm -hmm. I got to admit, I didn't really handle it very well at times, but, uh, so I, I knew that the only way I was going to get out of whatever and to move forward was to actually do what I do, mm -hmm. and, that was, and that's just writing right. and stuff. So I went back to writing and just locked myself in the studio and, and just started writing. And it ended up being, most of that material ended up being on the Skull and the Blackfinger records, sure. the first ones. Well, sure. um, so we'll see what, I don't know, you know. Okay. Now I'm at the point where maybe I need to start writing a, you know, with grab my acoustic, I just change the strings, maybe write some, start there again. Sure. At the beginning. Kind of bring it back down, over, strip, yeah. yeah, strip it down from the, yeah, like from the very beginning. Speaking of. That's another one. I know we bounced that idea around of doing some stripped down acoustic, like storyteller yeah. kind well, of I type always shows. wanted to do something like that. It's like where I, I love just sitting with an acoustic. I love guys like Cat Stevens. and mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of new guys too, you know, like the White Buffalo and amazing songwriter, you know, yeah. and stuff. And I always loved doing that. I mean, that was my first thing, actually, just sitting with an acoustic and writing and playing and, and stuff so that's it's the essence of music i mean it's like i don't know if stripped down is the right 
term, but I mean that is. We'll see. The, you know, the there's plenty of material. Here. That if I wanted to, like on all the records that mm -hmm. I could do, you know, Misery Shows, Rain, right, right. from back then, now, you know, the as long as I'm with you for all my life, there's a lot of shit I could do. So I always thought that would be fun, especially in my spare time, you know, <laughs> I'm bored, you know. <laughs> I think you'd get good feedback from something like that, too. I, um, we'll see. Okay, I get asked this every now and again, but I want to hear you tell the whole story. So uh -oh. let's let's revisit Probot for a second. Uh -oh. I mean, how was Dave Grohl to, to work with? How did that all come about? He was awesome, man. I mean, I was, like, after I left Trouble back in 96 or 5, whenever it was, I don't remember, and I did the lid record, and then I just ran away mm -hmm. from the music business. And um, one day I came home from work. I Yes, folks, I actually had a job. <laughs> um, I, there was a message on my machine asking me to do this song, I'm like, bullshit, you know, yeah, right, you know. <laughs> so then I didn't answer, and a couple of weeks later he called back, and I, okay, I'm going to let this guy have it, you know, and actually it was Dave, and he asked me to do this, and, you know, he said, yeah, I loved the Skull record back in the day when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. I want you to do this. I'm like, okay. So I, at first I didn't think I could even write anymore. It's been five years, you know, so... Uh, Dave was awesome, you know, I mean, <clears throat> in rehearsal it was funny because he was playing drums, you know, and so I look back and watching him play, I'm like, damn, that dude is an amazing drummer, I couldn't, you know, fuck, you know, so I actually, you know, they were playing the song wrong, from I know, and everybody, and I was, uh -huh. I was kind of afraid to say something at first, <laughs> but finally I couldn't take it anymore, I was under my skin. We're like, what the fuck? Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> Dave, man. You guys are playing this wrong. <laughs> oh, man. I just told Dave Grohl he's playing the yeah, show wrong. But it was, well, and, you know, and I'm like, he's like, why don't get over here? He's right. <laughs> so it was an awesome experience, you know. You think so, he'll, uh, I know that he's expressed interest in, you know, a lot of the other endeavors I, and stuff. You, you ever, you think there I could be a second call? Him. Think there could be a callback? Dude, I haven't talked to him yeah. for a while. After, I think the, when we did the MT, the song on MTV. Yeah, yeah. I think that might even be the last time I saw him. Let's talk Deaf American Records, because everybody wants to know why they haven't been re-released. Okay, uh, You're going to have to ask Rick Rubin that. But what was the final word on that? I mean, things have changed, you know, copyright-wise since know. then. But no, I mean, we signed our, you know, back then, you, your, your kids like, you know, and, well, we were a little bit older than kids, I guess, but, you know, you, you, you spend your life getting to the point where you can sign a contract with a major label and you sign your life away and you spend the rest of your life getting it back. Right. So he owns those albums and there's nothing we can do about it. You know, and why he won't give them, I don't know. So speaking of the Probot thing, uh, the bass player that was in that MTV mm -hmm. uh, is an engineer that works with Ruben. Oh, okay. So uh, he mentioned to Rick that he was doing that with me and he just said like i'm glad he's still doing it like you know and that's it so Never why he won't give those up why he's holding on to it, i have no idea so i mean is there a price tag he's dangling i, I don't think just, so i just... think there's been numerous people and labels over the years tried to get even some just license of them, sure, license sure. them from it but <laughs> so I, I i i don't know why i really don't he's a weird guy anyway yeah yeah, you know, he's he's a bit eccentric. From well, you know, he used to pick me up sometimes when we were out there recording, and his he had this old car. I can't remember what it was. Now he's picked me up, take me out to dinner, and he'd have soup dripping in his beer and <laughs> shit. So I, you know, he's a weird guy. He'd come into the clubs when it was closing, and you know, into the studio when we were done that night, and he'd come in at night. He slept. <laughs> he was up all night and slept all day. All day. Yeah, yeah, he was one of them guys. But good guy, and you know what? He taught me a lot of things, and he's probably one of the people that I have to credit to for me even sitting here still doing this. Okay, so fair enough. So I got nothing bad to say about him. Fair enough. Um, covers. Uh, now, I know that back in the Trouble days, you guys would throw some covers on albums every now and again. You, ever, you got any ideas for a good cover for The Skull or Blackfinger down the road? Or? I just, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I always look. So I don't know, and if I say something, then somebody's going to take it anyway, just like 
I mean, when was that? Run to the Light or Deaf America? I, I can't remember now, but we were on tour, and we were thinking about doing In a God of Vida, and we even had Doug Ingle, the keyboard player, was going to sit in and mm -hmm. play keyboards and stuff. Mm -hmm. So one of our roadies, we were in L.A. playing or somewhere, and the guys from Slayer, Kerry King, and that were there, okay. and our big mouth tech <laughs> mentioned it to him. So all of a sudden, here comes that movie, Less Than Zero, yep. with Slayer doing it in the movie. <laughs> so now I think the best course of action is just to keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> and save it. Save it for you. <laughs> Uh, Luis Ramirez just brought up a, a point too. Evidently, there's a Brazilian company that's re-releasing all the Trouble albums. Doubtful. I don't see how they're going to do it because, like I mm -hmm. said, um, they're going to have to get the rights from Deaf American for those too. And Metal Blade still owns Run to the Light, so I don't know how they're going to do that. Unless there's or no get, or, copyright laws down there, or get away with it. Them. I have no idea. Yeah. I have nothing to do with it anymore. I don't see anything. I don't see any money from them. Um, so I, I don't know. Gotcha. Okay. That is my answer. Like I said, I don't see how they're going to get away with doing the Deaf American records. They don't own the rights. Right. Noble doesn't own the rights. Right. Rick does. Gotcha. And I don't see him all of a sudden going, okay, well, for you, Brazil, okay. But we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, I'm I won't do in America, happy. but for Brazil. I'm not having yeah. too, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It hasn't happened too many times, but, you know. Yeah, hey, uh, Gene wanted to know what was the story behind uh, Arthur Brown's Whiskey Bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, that song, that was actually the working title mm -hmm. because it reminded me of the, the Door song, Whiskey Bar, mm -hmm. and sure. Arthur Brown okay. song on that album with Fire on it yep. and all that. Yep. Great records. Still a great record. Absolutely. So when it came time, then what I wrote it about was the bar that we used to hang out here in, in well, in Aurora growing up, like in Trouble, used to always, that was like our home bar a little bit. We'd play there when time to go out on tour, or we mm -hmm. had a record out, and it just kind of stuck. And I'm like, yeah. so when it's time, are you going to name this song this, or are you going <laughs> to come up with a different title? And I could, I'm like, Arthur Brown's Whiskey Bar, That's save it. it in the lyric, like, I'm yeah. like, perfect. So <laughs> it stayed, it always stayed, you know. Let's see here. I think we got a, we got some questions coming in. I'm going to try to catch up with everybody. If you want to repost any questions, I'll definitely get back to them, okay? Um, first album you ever bought with your own money. That I, I ever bought? You ever bought, yep. Ugh, I don't know. I know, everybody asks this question, but... I remember the 45s. I don't know if people know what that is. Sure. I remember the first 45s I bought was She Loves You by The Beatles. Snoopy versus the Red Baron, yummy, 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 and windy. <laughs> I was like seven. We were in the store. Ma, ma, there's like five for a dollar. I need five. Yeah, I need, yeah, please, please, mommy, mommy. So album-wise, I don't know, man. That's kind of tough. I, 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 you know, probably when I got a certain age, they let me join that. Columbia House thing. Oh, the little stamps. And you yeah, you stamps buy ten of them, and yeah. then you gotta buy so many in the next three years. Yep. You know, so. definitely, definitely remember that. Ah, uh, let's see here. There and more. The story behind the song Seven A.M. <laughs> Who's asking that? There and more. Who? I might be saying it wrong. There, there and more. Uh, you know, actually, it's a true story. Um, we were in Florida. With my family, actually at Chuck's house. Chuck was living in Florida with his wife then, his then wife. And um, I got up. I used to get up every morning and go to the watch, this, go to the beach and roll a joint and my coffee and um, sit there and watch it. And then, so the the one day, the last day we were there, I'm like, I'm getting up. I'm setting the alarm. And I want to see the sunrise over the ocean. So when I got there, it it. Um, it was raining. It was pouring. <laughs> you know, so um, I was pissed off. I was all pissed off, you know, and I grabbed my shit and started walking back, and something told me to turn around and look. And way out in the ocean, it, the sky kind of opened up, and the sun came out just right there. Oh, no kidding. So, you know, and then when I got up, my kids were all sleeping on the floor and shit, so it's actually a true, like a true story. A sure, sure. Of, uh, an account of that morning. That's like, cool. You know, so... So just that little ray kind of boop. It was weird, through. like, and it gave me, like, uh, I don't know how to, 
it, it was like, here, yeah, here you go. Like, here's your little, this is what you need, right? Yeah. I got what I needed that morning. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, whatever you want to call it, hope or... It filled the void. Uh, yeah. Whatever it was, like, you know, and that everything's okay. You know, sure. really, it really is. Like, and if you read the book, it had a happy ending. Gotcha. Okay, we got plenty of questions coming, so I hope, hope you're ready here. Oh, uh, let's see here. Brad. Brad Top. Oh, Brad, I lost you here, man. Let me see if I can back you up. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Brad wants you to know that he's got people that ask him if he's you all the time. <laughs> what? <laughs> so he says, he says, ask Eric if anyone thought he was me. Who's he? Brad Brad Toth. He does Sonic Asylum Radio. I know you've met him. He's been at, at many of us. Yeah, but fast. he's not me. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> Evidently, people mistake him for you, so he was wondering if it goes no, both ways. I don't know. <laughs> oh, let's people, see here. People ask me if I'm other people. <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought my specs. Oh, uh, let's see here. My man, Dan Tritton. If you're doing the last show you're ever going to do, what song would you play? It was like the last one, last show. Ever? You got, in my life. Got, got one in particular, I'm like, done. this is it. And I'm all done. You're done. Uh, up one of ours? I guess anything. Anything's up for grabs. Well, I mean, I don't do other people's music, so I guess so that's which, which, which one? Uh, dude, man, I don't know. Probably Misery Shows. Misery Shows? That'd be a, that's a big badass. Dude, you know, back in the day, I was like bugging the shit out of them guys to do that for an encore. And, oh, no, you know, fucking Eric, you always got these things, you know. <laughs> so I finally, we were in Switzerland, I think. Good place, good venue, good crowd, everything. I finally talked them into it. So I, like, hushed the crowd. Everybody was quiet. We did that song. I mean, it was pretty amazing yeah. feeling like, you know. Sure. We so did. I didn't want to say I told you or anything, but it was amazing, <laughs> you know. I mean, people were crying, like, even I had a hard time. For a minute, well, it's there. a very emotional you song, know. and if you've got the vibe with the audience, so maybe on, that you know. one. That was one of my songs that I wrote. It took me like two years to write it, yeah. you know. So didn't, didn't we do that in Philadelphia? Huh? Like that last show on the Black Finger when we went out east. Did you do that in Philly? Kind of just out of the blue, decided you guys decided to do that. Maybe I, I think know. I got that on video. Did I never give that to you? I don't know. I don't <laughs> I'll have to show you. Ooh, I, I might have some maybe stuff in the vault here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Um, a lot of these questions have to do with simple mind condition. A lot of people got some love for that. So, Charles Palermo, are you ever hey, going Chuck, to... man, how you doing? How you How's doing, Chuck? Are you ever going to perform anything from that album? Uh, you know, I don't know, probably not. You know, I mean, you know, you know, when we first started The Skull and Oli was still here, and with me, Oli, and Ron, I mean, yep. really, the only album that all three of us were on was Plastic, Plastic Green. Green. So, you know, Ron wasn't on that album, and he's just, he, he doesn't really want to, and I, I wouldn't even know. I mean, if we did do one, it might be Going Home, because he played on the one for the road, and, mm -hmm. you know, it was on that demo, so maybe sure. that down that somewhere. That would have tie-in, yeah. But I don't know, we're in the, you know, we're in the process of, like, <clears throat> you know, be, we want to be the skull. As, We're yeah. not trouble like you know. We do those songs, and I don't think people will let me get away with not singing at least something, f always for yeah. the rest of my life. But, but we want to be the skull. We have new music coming and stuff like that. So, I mean, we're always going to do some trouble stuff like. But right. it's kind of tough. There's seven records like in the pick to make everybody happy. Impossible task. Well, that's like we were discussing before we started the interview too with with. For those which are asleep, you know, Settled Now, which was a fantastic album, and the new album coming out, you've got two full albums worth of material that you're going to do full sets with. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're relying more on what you're doing now and well, the, we, the legacy we, stuff kind of nah, you know, we'll back see. up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we have, you know, some of the trouble stuff, we don't sound good doing it because we're not them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Rick and Bruce, they're, they're that, the guitar players and, and stuff, and... We're we're not them. I mean, I sang, yeah, mm -hmm. obviously, but so we have to kind of pick and choose a little bit what we sound good at doing. Right. And there's not every not we we try songs in rehearsal that oh let's try this one let's try this one off a of manic let's try this one off a of run to the light, 
you know, but some of them we don't really do good. Yeah. You know, and why do it then? Right. You know, and every time we pick songs to play that we think we sound good, there's always somebody in the audience that yell out something that we don't. So, like I said, that's a game that we can't win. Yeah. I mean, so it's got to make sense to we you We just guys, have to make so. ourselves happy. That's all yeah. you can do. Yeah. Well, it makes total sense here. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Um, sorry, guys. Dale Flood's here. He's, he's chiming in. Is there a, you're going to have to entertain him for a minute. i got to oh, pee. Oh, <laughs> Just like in the middle of a show. <laughs> Wasn't the first time, and it will not be the last. No. <laughs> All right, intermission here. I'll entertain for a few minutes. I'm trying to catch up with questions. So please, guys, um, if you need to post them again, if there's something you really want answered, uh, I'm going to do my best here. We're going to keep chit-chatting. Sorry for my big knuckles here. Darren McLeod, <laughs> Doombox, Darren. I think that's one of Dozer's favorites, too. Let's see here. Yeah, S.G. Smith. I'm glad you brought that up. There is a Eric Wagner group page on Facebook, Writer of Our Souls. Hey, Chia, that's a good question. I'm going to wait till Eric comes back and uh, we'll hit that up. So, um, everything still looking okay out there, guys? Sounds okay. I know it's on the phone here. Just making sure. Scott Harrington gets to see the skull on 420. That is, that is a coincidence. Thank you. All right, sorry about that, but I'm it, old. I'm getting old. It happens. What are you going to do? <laughs> that ever After happened? Today, we have spots the set list is constructed <laughs> in a way, such a way that there are moments that I can sneak away to take a piss. <laughs> so you can sneak out and yep, keep playing. Oh, totally. Keep Especially playing. like that part in uh, Send Judas down like that's yep, totally that's a bathroom break. Well, it's been extended <laughs> even, so I got plenty of time. You know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jay Weaver wants to know: Do you still talk to Ollie? No. Been a while. Been a while. Not since he left. I haven't talked to him. So I don't. I don't know what he's up to. Got a lot of love for the Skull Records. Everybody's saying that they're looking for the new one. Uh, let's see here. Out of curiosity, what is your day job? If there is one outside of music, no, I don't. I don't have one. He's a political I, analyst on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so watch those memes, yeah, guys. I just, have, I just try to, to you know. Right now, since I'm like not writing and taking a break from all that, I'm just trying to, you know, fill my day basically. And but Facebook is kind of one of my guilty pleasures, you know, that yeah. I go on, and I just can't believe. This, uh, whatever, I don't get it, you know. There's, yeah. It's because everybody's complaining and bitching. It's just like, wow, you know. Find something to do constructive. Read a book. I don't know, you know. I know there's a lot of times where I, it's know, like, I we like, just got to walk I away I always like MySpace better back in the day because it was all about music and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, not about politics or religion or bitching or I feel like shit or you suck or I suck whatever I know I mean Jesus it was really. I think my space that was more well, more artistic and more sharing it didn't have that instant no, live about, feed of everybody it was more about music you had your little yep. players to switch out it was more it was a lot more fun I thought I agree with you uh Danny Kavanaugh hey Danny hey Eric what's up how you doing Danny is <laughs> lid he, He's on the lid album with me. He, he says, hey, we recorded and toured together. <laughs> we did. We did. Remember that time you guys came up to me? We were at the Dynamo Festival, and uh, I think I was talking English to you guys. <laughs> and we ended up doing some ecstasy. You guys were all fucked up, man. It was hilarious. <laughs> hey, the, the Dynamo. There's a video. I can't remember if it's Dynamo or if it was one of the other fests. But there's a video floating around of you guys doing Plastic Greenhead. The, the video's a little scrambled, but, right, I mean, right. is there a full full footage of all of that, or is it just that one side? Yeah, I'm sure the Dynamo people have it, yeah. you know, and I, 
There used to be a one that wasn't like that, but I don't know what happened to mine. And this one on here, yeah, it's got it's a little scrambled. But yeah, I don't know. Do they they offer you the footage of that? I'm assuming after uh, performances. I, did, I don't or? remember. It was '95. Okay. It was the 10th anniversary. That was probably the biggest thing we played. It's just that was the after, it was just downhill from there. I got gotcha. you. It was so such a high and a peak, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it was. Somebody just kind of going along with what you're saying. Somebody else asked too. I'm gonna guess your answer, but has there ever been a preference of those massive European festival crowds, or do you enjoy like a Reggie sized crowd better? I mean, more well, intimate. You know, or, I mean, they both, I'm sure, have their you know pers benefits. Personally, I think it's easier to play in front of two thousand people than it is to twenty. Gotcha. But my favorite shows really are in a club scene, packed. Everybody's having a great time, you know. I love getting people high, you know, a couple of times sure. in New York, like last time, you know, and let's smoke a joint like, and people start firing it up, and everybody's got a nice little buzz on it. We just, here we are, you know. Yeah. So the intimate, but like I said, it's easier. I'd rather play in front of 20,000 people than 20. Sure. Everybody's looking at you, man. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's. <laughs> I well, know what you're saying. Then there's always the two people in the front doing this. <laughs> Stop looking at me, man. You know? And then one of those two is yelling out, hey, do this. Go get me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. Uh, Dale Flood wants you to bring the skull to Nashville. Okay. Hey, let's see. Hey, Dale, how you been? Let's see. It says, uh, Debbie. Oh, Debbie Rebel Gus, how you doing? She wants to know. I've seen her in BC. Did you? And you guys are all, okay. She wants to know if the new album is possibly going to be a double album. No. no. It was enough, ain't it? Well, you like the skull a lot. I mean, we're going to well, make you guys work it over time. One at, one at a time. <laughs> There's some material that we didn't use for this one that's like, um, dare I say it, maybe for another one. You know, we'll see. Doombox has been mentioned a few times, too. Who? Doombox. Doombox. <laughs> wow, that was on one for the road, wasn't it? Yeah, Darren wants to hear Doombox. <laughs> Let's see here. There's always one in the crowd, isn't there? Oh, always. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to pick this up because I can't see. One second here. Tim McGrogan, it says, How long did you and the band Trouble rehearse for the 2003 Brave World's Buddy Knuckles Fest in Cleveland, Ohio? That set was still the greatest live performance I've ever heard. Something magical was going on that night. Is that like the first one that we did? I think you, yeah, it was you so guys. We did two. Well, the first one we played right before Candlemas. Yeah. That one is legendary. There's yep. still people that come up to me, and I tell you, I was even during like some solo breaks and shit, standing off to the side going, wow. Yeah. I mean, the sound, everything, it was just a cl happening yeah. that night, you know. And yeah, I, I won't forget that show. That's one of the. Best shows that I've That ever, one's got a special uh, yes. spot, yeah. yeah okay. It was amazing. And they even, we walked backstage after we were done in Candlemas, you know. Uh, Ed, he was like, how are we supposed to go on now, you know. <laughs> Ed, you know, Messiah, you know. <laughs> I When I first met him, was in California, you know. and he, I think we were recording the Def, first Deaf American, and they were there. Okay. In Orange County, it was the first time we'd seen them. We, we knew who they were. You know, because there's not too many play, people playing that kind of music then. Right, right. But anyway, he comes up to me and introduces himself. He goes, you know, Messiah, Markle, and he, you know, he's like, but you don't have to call me Messiah, you can call me Ed. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> was, was he pretty, pretty he's a good guy. I know yeah, a lot of people yeah. think yeah, he's kind he's of a, off his rocker nah, a little bit, but well, I've so heard he's... Who ain't, you know? Exactly. I haven't met too many people, <laughs> especially a singer's like, you know. <laughs> Jesus, what a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, Kathy Reeves wants to know if you washed your hands when you got done in the bathroom. I don't know. Why? I don't know. We'll let you know later. <laughs> yeah, I... of course. <laughs> Isn't uh, that what they teach you? Exactly. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, this is another one that I, I know people bring up. They want to know, is there an alternate version of Run to the Light that was... It's kind of—I don't know if it's if people are going to say it's urban legend or myth, but I've heard this going around too that there's a separate well, version of the whole well, entire album. Well, there's not an alternate version, but there is a, and 
I don't know if I have it, and if I do, I have no idea where it would be. But it was I, there's a version of it before it was mixed. Okay. And it sounds just like the first two. Okay. Actually, and uh, the, see, that's what I don't like about that record. I hate the mix on it. Dude was doing coke or something. I don't know, you know. But yes, there is a version of, like I said, before mixed down, and and it sounds just like the first two albums. It would have been right in line with those, right? You know. So and we ended up doing that one in Chicago instead of going out to L.A. Which then, I, which uh, during that album, I already I had kids, a couple kids already, and. But now I knew why we went to L.A. to do the record. Right? <laughs> Less distraction. <laughs> okay, well, that that kind of clears it up, because yeah. I've always wondered that same thing. So, Jeff, that was, a, that was a good question here. All right, I'm scrolling here for a couple more questions. I'm, I'm behind you guys, so give me, uh, give me a second here. Oh, so, Christina Rose, what is the most messed up onstage experience you've ever had? That I've had? Yeah. What's the, what's the nuttiest, craziest Dude, thing that's I, ever happened? I don't know. It's <laughs> like, there's so many. It's, too, it's like 40 <laughs> years. And I haven't been able to process <laughs> not even You're a still working quarter now. of it. You know, people come up to me, do you remember this? You know, the funniest things is when guys come up to me and go, hey, man. Remember that time we smoked a joint out back at a venue? Oh, that was you? How are you? Been Dude, a while. It was like a million, <laughs> one million seven hundred sixty-five thousand three hundred forty-eight times, dude. You're that and I and you're the one I remember. <laughs> so, not, you know, when the older you get, you know, and I've been out of that band now, and actually, uh, in May it'll be ten years since I've been out of trouble. So, you know, now it's more you, you just remember the good times and mm -hmm. fond memories and things and where the bad shit kind of goes away, you know. Sure. Um, so, I don't, I, I, I don't know. There's a lot of things, you know. Yeah. So there's good and bad, all the, like with everything, you know. It's so, just part of the experience. You just kind of let it Well, out. every now and then, sometimes when I'm standing there <clears throat> taking a piss or something, I have flashbacks of, of things like, oh, my God, really, we did that? <laughs> <laughs> I did that. Oh my God! So you know, I think we all do that in our yeah, personal. Yeah. So lives too. I I don't know of anything specific offhand. You know. What was um, what was it like touring with Saint Vitus a couple of years ago? That was a blast. You know, we shared a bus and shit, and, and uh, uh, I haven't seen like Scott was singing with them, and I haven't seen him. They backed us up once in Chicago at the Metro a long time ago. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Long time, like in the 80s. You okay, know? I was unaware of that. So I haven't seen him in forever, and, and Chandler and stuff. So it was fun. I had a blast, you know. Mm -hmm. So Some, Those are good dudes. Let's see here. Uh, Sue Verica was also... Sorry. Sue Verica was also at the Brave Word show. She said she believes that was the best one ever, too. Oh, God. The second one was good, too. Nevermore was on we one of those We headlined the second one, one one night, but the mm -hmm. first one, that was just like, Magic. I don't know what was going on that night, but it was yeah. a good one. Yeah. So Danny Kavanaugh, what Beatles song would you play at your funeral? Shit, I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> it, I, I, for sure it would be a John song, though. <laughs> Gotta be a John one. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, uh... Well, he thinks it was going to be Hey Jude. No, that's Paul. <laughs> Even though, you know, it's a great song. It might be one of the greatest songs ever written in rock, but... No, it would be a John. I have to pick John, you know. I, I Dude, there's so many. I have no idea. All right, here's a good one, which we were talking about earlier. Elvin wants to know, what new bands are you listening to? What new bands do you like? No, I don't like nothing, man. <laughs> I don't like nothing. <laughs> we don't listen to none nothing, of them. Dude, none if of I do listen thing. to music, I either go backwards, or I'm lately I've been really into uh, like just singer songwriter guys. Mm -hmm. You know, um, especially you know, uh, like the soundtrack to like Sons of Anarchy. You know, I mean. I don't know who picked these guys who picked songs, but I thought it was brilliant. And so a lot of times I've learned, I've found a lot of good dudes 
from that soundtrack. Sure. Like, you know, Noah Gunderson, the White Buffalo. Um, what are we talking about there? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Greg Hold and Joshua James. There's so many. So, I mean, if, when I do listen to music now, I mean, you know, I'm on tour a lot and in the clubs and shit. And one thing I don't listen to at home is heavy metal. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I want peace. You know what I mean? So I yep. listen to very calm kind of music and stuff like that. And in two weeks, I'm going to be back on the road and these people are going to be screaming in my ear again. Right, right. So that's that's cool to save it for that. <laughs> no, it makes sense, too. When, well, it's, no, it's not nothing, no offense against anybody, but it's been a long time. My ears hurt. I got to save them for me now recording and then when we play and things like that. So. Right. That makes sense. All right, we've got... Okay, we're still looking good here. Um, let's see, it says... Uh, Jeff Edwards says... Oh, what did I do? Sorry, guys. Jeff Edwards says he's got a bunch of video footage from the 2000s. From 2000? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. That's like almost 18 years ago. <laughs> Danny's lighting you up, man. <laughs> He's uh, he wants he goes ask Garrick if he can do the George Harrison impression. He did it Dynamo. <laughs> want to want to start me own business? <laughs> remember the boss? Remember on the boss, dude? We were cracking up. You know, when we were touring with Anathema, like we were sharing a bus. And, uh huh. Dude, we were cracking up so hard because we because them guys are from Liverpool, so they talk just like it. Right, right. And the one dude was a Paul, and so I was doing John, <laughs> you know. And we, I remember stopping early in the morning, and we were in Germany, and it, it was snowing in <laughs> the castle and shit. I think we were doing acid. I don't know about them, but we were. I was. Dude, we were laughing so hard, man. It was a blast. See, I remember my acid trips better than I remember being straight. <laughs> So you gonna you gonna do the impression for us? No. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. We tr we tried. When I see, I'll do it over a beer. <laughs> for just for you. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh my God! It keeps sticking to the coaster. Uh, let's see here. When are you going back to Houston? In a couple weeks. A couple of weeks. We're doing four shows in Texas. Austin, Fort Worth, San Antonio, and Houston. Tejas. So, middle of April, I think. Something like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Abraham Ram wants to know about the skull coming to Los Angeles. I don't know the schedule yet. Um, it's on the routing, though, right? Yes, right. absolutely. We're uh, It starts with June 2nd in Chicago at that fest, and we head west, so... Like I said, I'm not sure what the schedule is yet. I do know we're going to be in San Diego on the 15th or 16th because my kid lives there and I wanted to know so he could come to the show. Yeah. So I'm sure L.A. will be right before that, you know. Maybe. But, yeah, we're doing San Francisco, L.A., probably Seattle, all that. Excellent. Yeah, you guys are going to be really visible. I mean, you guys got a lot of dates coming yeah, up here. Cool. I mean, like be all fun. over the place. It'll be fun. You know, I like I said, I, I mean, I'm surprised I still get to do this. So, um, anything just uh, awesome that I still get to, it surprises me. Like, but it's sure. really cool, and mm -hmm. you know, just be grateful for that you can. You know, that somebody right. still wants to hear what my big mouth has to say. And well, and they do though. I mean, <laughs> you know, and it's like you know, I know when you guys first started out, you know, like the words legendary band and singer, you know. Nobody thought you were going to be the, the doom gods and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, as the years progressed and genres kind of took shape and, you know, everything has sort of trickled down from Sabbath and everybody else, I think it's pretty darn cool that you got involved and, and as a part of that. It blows my know? mind. Yeah. Like, I'm glad. I mean, why not? So, I'm, you know, I'll be, as long as people want to see it, like, I guess I'm in. Because it's not going to last forever. Right. You know, no matter what. So, one of these days it's going to be done and gone and... So in the meantime, you know, I'm just uh, going to enjoy it and take advantage of it. I get to go to Europe. I get to go to L.A. in June. I get to, you know, see people that I've met and, and know in different cities uh, around the United States and Europe and shit like that. And get to say hello again and how you doing and have a beer. 
it's it's awesome, you know. So as long as they want to see us do it, you're in. I'm in. You're in. Yeah. That's good. That's good to hear. One of these days, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Walk out your walker. <laughs> I well, I got that now. I'm still the no tempter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob Fouts, what do you what do you recall from the Danzig tour? What do we call for what? what Danzig. Do you, what do you recall from that tour? Uh, what do we? Uh, the only thing I remember is that it started in Vegas, <laughs> and when we got there, they fucked up our room, so they gave Comptus to see Tom Jones. <laughs> That was their answer to "Sorry about your rooms, go see Tom Jones." Yeah, dude, it was awesome. It was weird, <laughs> just like in the movies, you know, the little place with the tables with the little lamps the little, on them. Like the good fellas, they well, all yeah. Sit <laughs> Freaky man, there he was, Tom Jones. Not unusual to be loved by anyone. Freaking out, man. Freaking out. So that's what I remember from the day. So it wasn't so story. bad after all, huh? It nah, worked out pretty good. good. <laughs> okay, and I know somebody's going to piggyback off of that because the. That question always comes up. Uh, 87 King Diamond Tour. What, what do you think? What, what what kind of memories you got from that one? That was like our first major tour. It's a little fuzzy. <laughs> it's probably good, though. I do remember one time. Now, King, he's a, he's another one, just like Ed. Mm -hmm. Now, I said, dude, I can't, what's, I can't call you King, man. <laughs> you know, so he's like, hey, Kim, yeah. really nice guy, you yep. know. But he was the only person over all these years, you know, all the satanic bullshit. He's the only one back then that actually practiced it. Mm -hmm. He's the only one. All these other bands, Venom and Slayer, they didn't. It was all just... just he walked a walk, though. Huh? Right, so, okay. you know, and uh, but I, I heard that he changed his tune now after he had his... Heart attack or whatever, you know, a little bit, but whatever. Um, Do you guys get to hang out with Mickey D at all? All the time. Like, I, we, were is, always, we were traveling together a lot. We both had the mobile home. Yeah, yeah. You know, Mickey was nuts. I was going to say, I heard his, you know, his backstage Mickey stuff was legendary. Mickey D, <laughs> like, you know. Um, I remember in Houston, actually, there was um, this group of people, they used to call themselves the Doom Society. <laughs> now... I I don't know who they were anymore, and I, there's nobody has come up to me. We've only we haven't played Houston a lot with the Skull, mm -hmm. so nobody's really come up to me and said, "Hey, man, I was a part of that," <laughs> you know. But I remember that night after we got done, it was one of the only times on the Dan, uh, King Diamond tour that we actually people actually liked us. I mean, we weren't the headliner, so mm -hmm. obviously it's always right, right, we're the support act, but. That night it was different, and somebody threw a glass of water in his face. Really? And his makeup started running, and I tell you what, he looked eviler like that <laughs> than he did. All smeared up. You and know what to see what I look like, you know? I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> you know? It was kind of funny though, but no, those guys are great, you know. And yeah. I just seen uh, we were at, I think King Diamond played. Uh, what's that fest in France? Hell's Pleasure. Hell's Pleasure, yeah. I think he was well, they were there, and yeah. uh, the manager and uh, Andy LaRoque was there in the, in the Holy Bang. food room. Yeah. Him, so he's still with them. Yeah. So we were talking to him for a while. It was cool to see them guys oh, that's again. That's cool. You know? That's cool. Uh, Scott Harrington, has anyone ever told Eric that his speaking voice sounds a bit like John Goodman? No. Scott, no. No. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, oh, Danny wanted to ask you one more question. Well, maybe he's got more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you grow to like the mix on Manic Frustration? Uh, you know, back then, 93, major label, Warner Brothers and shit, you know, and it, they called it a radio mix. Mm -hmm. Now, what the hell ever that, what that means, I don't know, you know. I think the songs are great, uh, uh, great memories. I still, it's a little bit... I like things a little deeper and warmer mm -hmm. for when I listen to music. Um, I still think it's a great record, and it did. You know, I had fun doing it back then. It's a little harsh for me mm -hmm. now, in my ears, especially now. I'm deafer and <clears throat> all this, but um, to be honest with you, I don't listen to to none of that stuff. I heard it. 
I heard it. <laughs> it's all up here, right? All of it. <laughs> a million times, right? You know? Uh, S.G. Smith, how did you get Bill Ward to end up in the video? I, I think the director, uh, Metal Blade, uh, got knew the guy that directed the video, and he knew him. He lived, like, next door to him in L.A., wherever the hell it was, right. you know, and we had to be careful. We couldn't drink beer or smoke <laughs> weed or nothing because he was in rehab, just got out of rehab and all this <laughs> shit, you know. So I thought it was great. I love the ending when he throws Dennis off the yep, drums. Yep. Like, you know, great. Right into the... And he whipped him, too, Did man. He? Yeah, well, that was not... It, it wasn't act, an no. act that he really it got was on It was planned him, to take him off the drum, but not like... He whipped him, man, and Dennis went into the dirt, man. It was hilarious. Did he get man. up like, what the hell was he, that? Yeah, he was hurt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he went face first into the gravel. Well, that's memorialized forever in that, in that video. <laughs> he went flying, like, it's funny. <laughs> Chuck says, I'm assuming Chuck's talking about the brave words. Bloody Knuckles show, he said that we smoked it in Cleveland. We did. Oh, yeah. It was funny. Afterwards, uh, we were at, uh, at the hotel, and the whole floor was a party, and my kid was there. <laughs> Jack, and he was trying to get him to hooked up with his chick, and we're like, stop it. <laughs> you know, he's only like, what, six, 16 or what, you know. And they were like, like let's, let's like, go, Joe. You know, he would love it. And if I was 16, you know, yeah, of course, obviously. That's why I don't get these teachers and they get in trouble for being with their, with you know, their yeah, 16, yeah. 17. Are you kidding me? That dude was in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's, move, let's move on. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Michael Allen Gould. What's uh -oh. up? What's that? Uh oh, let's see. Saw you guys with uh, Coven. Did you guys get to meet Jinx? You've met Jinx a couple of times. Not right? really. Yeah. She's like Jinx Dawson, you yeah. know. So all secretive. She walked by the dressing room a few times, you know, and looked peeked in. I'm not one for. I don't care. Yeah. You know, to go starstruck or mm -hmm. whatever, and I don't know if. You know, I'm not going to say anything, but no, I didn't meet her really. Yeah. I didn't go out of my way to either. Yeah. I was busy <laughs> it's, sitting in the dressing room waiting for us to play. You know? It's just her and like one of the guitarists that are from the original. I have no band. idea. I, and I, 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 I could be no completely idea. wrong on that. I know too, one but... thing they didn't do once in Soldier. Oh, no? No. <laughs> well, the heck with that then. Uh, let's see here. Well, we kind of talked Coven about this. Or Coven. Coven, Coven, whatever you prefer. I guess it depends. Uh, it's gotta be from. one that's true, right? Right. Tomato, tomato. Uh, Mikey Gould wanted to ask about any anything cooking acoustically. I think we kind of talked about that earlier. What? You know, if you'd like to do like a little acoustic tour, yeah, yeah, a couple of shows. Yeah, kind of fun. We'll see what happens. Right now, I'm kind of busy. I can't. So I can't break away from. So it's just uh, just besides thinking about it, you know. Yeah, no, uh, Mike Haran, it says, Ron told me that the skull was formed after the 2011 Days of the Doom Fest, which, yep, that, that was my doing. True. Uh, can you talk about how that all came together for you? What what was the conversation like after that show? That Well, I, it's kind of funny, actually, I think, of the next day, I think it was the next day, a couple of days later, I sent Ron and Oli an email saying that I want to start a tribute band and, uh, <laughs> and I've just seen if you guys were interested, you know, and they asked me, well, what do you do? What? I'm like, it's tribute to trouble. I'm like, you look just <laughs> like the bass player and the drummer. And I have this uncannery resemblance for the singer. I even sound exactly like him. It's crazy. So I thought it'd be kind of cool. Like, and everybody like, yeah, maybe, you know, so. We we were talking about it and trying to you know come up with a name and just out of the blue we released it. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, watching it light up and shit. You know? <laughs> oh my god, that was fun. I remembered that too, and I uh, I think Ron's the first one that that told me, and then I want to say that he did like a quick interview with uh, Metal Chaos. I might have even done something, but yeah, I mean that was that was pretty cool. I was I was pumped right along with you guys. Like, whoa, well, it was kind of fun. It's been a long time since we shit. Played them songs, you know, and uh, <clears throat> especially with us three in it. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, it was what 
geez, uh, 95, only in, only, only, only was on Simple Mind Condition, but not Ron. So, right. so be, with us three, it was since Plastic Greenhead. Yep. So it was kind of fun doing those songs again, and that's what got me thinking about it. And sure. That was that was a jam. That was that was a highlight of of my night and that weekend. That was well, that was the birth of the skull. Was that night? That, yeah, that was that was sweet. If there, uh, there's video of uh, YouTube video of that night too for the the songs that we did. I think they're listed as Trouble Jam or something like that. Uh, let's see here. What do we got here? What do we got here? I'm gonna take a couple more questions, guys, and I think. Uh, you want to take a couple more? You, you hanging in there? Okay. Right. I'm gonna have to piss here in a minute. Again. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> my buddy Dan wants to know what was it like to work with me? To work with him? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I think I think he's just. Well, know. I gotta tell you, Michael <laughs> here, funny. Mike here, he's, it doesn't happen a lot in your life, but we, we've been. I think for, it seems like that from the moment we shook hands, we've been friends. Absolutely. So. Yep, I agree that doesn't that. happen a lot like that. I mean, you get to know people over the years, but it was kind of like from the moment we met, we've been kind of friends ever since. I mean, we can talk about, you know, we don't sit and just talk about music, too. We talk about baseball. And, yeah, but and I, I else, got to, know. sometimes when I'm talking to him, because, you know, he's involved in Blackfinger and stuff, I got to tell him to change his hat. <laughs> you know, you, you take, notice I didn't wear that take one tonight. Take the fanboy <laughs> hat off, put the business one on. There's a few of them, different ones like, okay, dude, I need your opinion on this, but put this one on right now, you know. I, I would, yes, I, I do need to wear a few, few hats here. Uh, let's see here. Mark, I hope I'm not butchering your name, Mark. Mark Parton says, is the new album, mm -hmm. The Endless Road Turns Black, going to be played at the New England Stoner and Doomfest? Will you be selling vinyl at the merch booth? That album's not going to be out yet, so we might do a one or two mm -hmm. off that record just to say here we got a new some new shit. Okay. Um, yeah, vinyl. We will have the first one out, first one there. Okay. But that one won't be out until beginning of September, probably late so. August or September. So we won't have the new one yet. All right, Mark. Sorry about that. Hang in there, because it, it will it's it will be there. Patience. Patience. If I got to wait, so do you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to scroll here a couple of times. Oh, uh, Casey Joe says she's liking the beard. She's what? She's liking the beard. Yeah, you know, uh, thank you. I mean, <laughs> you know, after we got done with the skull, it was still cold out, and I was kind of bored, <clears throat> so I figured I'd watch it grow. <laughs> Uh, Adam John says, cheers from Ottawa. It was I, an excellent show there. And well, he, thank you. I remember. How you doing, man? Are you heading back up there? No. Are you? No. Any, not any right plans? now. Not on this next run here, no. Yeah. Okay. We're actually going across and doing the New England thing in mm -hmm. Connecticut and then going down the East Coast, East Coast. to like Atlanta. Yep. Okay. Um, North Carolina, uh, Atlanta, New Orleans, Texas, and home. Gotcha. St. Gotcha. Louis, I think we're playing St. Louis like, on the way up. So hang in there, Adam. One of these days they, they well, will be we back will. up. We'll be back. Uh, Rob DeWitt, did Donovan ever hear Breathe? And if so, what did he think? Did Donovan ever what? Did he ever hear Breathe? Yes, he did. Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, actually, we were recording that record, and we needed an ending for that song. Uh, I'm in the studio... The guys were in there recording guitars or whatever they were, and I was watching Goodfellas. So that scene when Joe Pesci comes back and locks the door and they kick the shit out of that guy, and that's the song that's playing. So I go running in there, Ruben, man, come here, come here, this is the ending. Great. He loved it. He loved it. He signed Donovan. After that, he asked for permission and oh, no. signed Donovan. Like After that, did, did a record with him, actually. Really? Yeah. So, yeah, he heard it. Oh, that's good. That was a good question. All right, here, let's see what we got here. Um, <laughs> Mike Gould, what was your craziest memory of Melo's? Jesus. <laughs> Hard to pick just one? Dude, there's a ton of shit, man. I, <laughs> some things I can't even write in my book. <laughs> there's we, your we answer, grew up, We grew up in that place. <laughs> uh, Charles Palermo, what was it like uh, touring with Sabotage? Whew, that was like that was like, man oh man, there was some <laughs> back in the party huh? times. 
with that. It was great. I mean, me and John, you know, me and, you know, I, I don't really get into the business part of shit. Like, you know, me and John be singing Beatles songs in the dressing room before the show. And right. Shit like that. And getting high and drinking and shit like that. And Good times. So I, I, that's what I use, most did. I, I hung, me and John hung together. Yeah. You know, so I don't see him that often anymore. I don't think he doesn't. I don't think he gets out too much anymore. He had that John Olivia's Pain project going on. Yeah, and then he's got some other stuff going on too. But uh, I always heard he was a real genuine guy, real he's a laid back. Guy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we the last it was tradition back then that you always fucked with the band you were touring with, like right, right. So while well, during Sabotage's set, the last show of that tour, we had a a pizza delivered to them <laughs> on stage. <laughs> <laughs> They brought the table out. <laughs> and, uh, pizza. Then the pizza guy came, and the guy had they had to pay him, like you know, they had a bottle of Jack. So then we went up and we started hitting that bottle of Jack, and that <laughs> dude, it was nuts after that, man. <laughs> All bets were off. Yeah, I think I rolled John off the stage <laughs> into the crowd, man. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Oh, jeez. All right, Jay Weaver. Do you find it humorous that Mike thinks that the Brewers can hang with the Cubs this year? No. It's not. <laughs> well, it's cute. Cute? Yeah, oh. it's, cute. it's cute, but it's not. Come on, be realistic. Like, Jay, you owe me for asking that one. <laughs> you kidding no, me? you got to be realistic. Like, I mean, yeah, it's fans, and I grew up a Cub fan, so uh, I always had these hopes and dreams. They were unrealistic. I mean, they sucked, but they were still my team, and I know... He feels right. the same way about yeah. the Brewers. So yeah. It's a friendly little ribbing. Yes. But, you know, you got to be realistic, too. There's no way on <laughs> earth that they're going to, you know. Well, I don't, it's too early to tell right now. That's all I'm going to say. I'm well, gonna say, you, you, you know, know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, it's a good rivalry. <laughs> uh, let's see here. When is Eric, or when Eric is ready to write his autobiography... Um, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, it says, I will be there with my fantasy novel, S.G. Smith. I guess he wants to include you in on that. It's the hardest part is remembering shit. It's going to have to be like, somebody's going to have to write it for me because I can't sit down <laughs> and say, okay, here's here's all the stuff. It's going to have to be somebody asking me questions and I just have to talk. Right, right. And put it in, a, and that person's going to have to put it in its proper perspective where it goes. Because I can't, you can't just sit down and say, all right, tell me about this. You kind of put that in motion already, didn't you? Well, it's kind you of. You were kind of talking to somebody it's, about yes, putting yeah, that together? Yes, yeah, it's been kind of it started yeah. a little bit. It's been put on hold again because I just did two records in a row again. Yeah. I, it's hard for me to do, you know, when I when I write a record, it's like 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time pushing the time clock because I'm right. always thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know. You left your shoes. <laughs> what shoes? What are you talking about? I was here trying to save the fucking world. You're talking about shoes? You I'm know? in my head. I'm, what? I'm getting this down. So it's hard for me to do different <clears throat> things like that. Right. So, you know, when the time comes. I, You know, when the time does come for that, and I've brought this up to you before, but you've got to put all those little I anecdotals know. that, that we talk know. about. Cause that's, It'd be real oh. much easier to just put my lyrics in there and... But I'm like, a couple I, pictures and shit. Yeah, I know, but I like to know my like, headspace. People what were you thinking? You gotta talk about the song. <laughs> so, like I said, it's kind of like a jog of my memory because I don't. Re it's just too much, <laughs> right? And I can't remember. I just can't. No. Not at once. No. So it's gonna have to be like a like okay, well, to think about this. You know what's happened during this song, whatever. You know. Here's a good one. Um, do you have any special way that you maintain your voice? Any particular style or method? How do you maintain your voice? You have any kind of special methods that you use? Yeah, well, it's like Let's cigarettes and weed, and <laughs> it, was, it was it was funny when we were on tour with Vitus and Witch Mountain a couple of years ago. Um, you know, the singer in Witch Mountain, like uh, Kayla, she's like over there with her steam thing <laughs> and her tea, and uh, and Scott is with his tea, and there's Eric over there with a box on the rocks and a cigarette. <laughs> Are we ready yet? You know. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there you go. There, was, that's the answer kind of to your a question. Fun joke going around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's do two more here because I know Eric's got a. 
Use that bathroom. Hey, Ryan Parks. You know Ryan. Hey, man. How you doing? We'll be seeing you, hopefully. Huh? Yeah, that's what he's asking. He's like, uh... Ron teased that there may be some California shows coming yes, up. Any info? Absolutely. Yep, we kind of hit on that. So For sure. It's in the routing. First two weeks in June. Um, like I said earlier, we start in Chicago on the 2nd. And I think we'll be out your way around the 14th, 13th, 14th, 15th in there. I know San Diego is the last show of the tour. Um, so I think it goes L.A., Vegas, San Diego okay. at the end there. So, so like that's, I said, somewhere between the 13th and the 16th. You'll be I'm seeing them, Ryan. Sure when. when those routing dates come out. As soon as sure I know, you'll know. Take those days off of work. All right, let's uh, let's get a couple more here. Um, okay, I think Jay would just ask this too, but favorite prank you played on a band? I think that sabotage order that's of pizza was pretty the, good. And what was there any pranks played on you guys? I'll spin that. I can't remember. We were better at it <laughs> over the years, like, you know, the Pantera with the joint thing. And, yep, yep. You know. <laughs> Think nobody could get one over and you guys. Uh, huh? you know, I get up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Poncho, it says, how does, you, how does poor sleeping affect your voice? How does what? If you don't get enough sleep, if you're like got insomnia, Poncho was asking, how do, does that I, affect your voice? Or no problems with that? Or you know, I get ready for a show. Green tea is like a gift, mm. and a couple of those, um, and it opens me up, and I'm ready to go. Um, sleeping, I don't, I don't sleep, you know, yeah. that great. I'm, I like getting up in, in the morning when when it's still dark out. Sure. Or, and nobody's out as peaceful. It's the most peaceful time of the day. I love going out and watching the sun come up, the dawn. <clears throat> um, and, you know, I'm by myself, and I'm slice and quiet. It gives me time to overthink. Mm -hmm. So I love it, you know. <laughs> it is. It's funny, too. I mean, you know, when you're younger, too, you party all night and you sleep all day. But I just sleep till noon. I think there's something to be said about that, too, because it could be the internal alarm clock, well, but do, I'm up early, too. Well, I, I do my that. best work in the, in the morning like that, the writing. That's when I write. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's, when I can't. How can you write fucking doom lyrics with the sun shining through the window? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so are rainy days better writing days? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Close the curtains, make it dark in there. You're getting plenty of com compliments from some of the shows, the DC shows. People are loving it. So, um, you ready to wrap it up? Any any last words? Obviously, I think everybody's kind of gotten from. From our little conversation, that, that the skull is going to be out and about. So yeah, you have ample just, opportunity. It hasn't started yet, but we got the new album coming. We got the tours. It's going to looking forward to seeing people again and, you know, be in Europe for a month in the, in the fall. That's going to be fantastic. So looking forward to it. Everything's new. Everything's exciting. Uh, it's all like you don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's kind of, I like that. You <laughs> know, fresh page. You, you haven't know, written it yet, you know. You know, hopefully it's all positive and everything, like it usually is, but, right. you know. So the new Skull record on TP Records will be out late August, early September, yeah. right around there. Um, all formats again, I'm assuming, so you vinyl friends will have your crack at that. Um, Blackfinger's still available. CDs, some vinyl, available on M3 Audio. Just and go that's, to the website, man. Yep. Go to Eric's website. EricWagnerMusic.com. There you go. Some very cool stuff there. Check it all out. Um, I think we are uh, going to wrap this up, guys. So, most enjoyable. Most enjoyable. Eric, thanks for uh, for doing this on a Monday night. Hope we uh, came across okay. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but I uh, hope you guys had fun hanging with us. We had a good time. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks again, Eric. Peace. See you guys soon. Take care.